Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the Excel solver function. Now it seems tricky to people, but we're going to use two examples and we'll make it simple for you to understand. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills, including Excel. So let's do just a little bit of introduction about Solver. So in a previous video, we did Goal Seek, and Goal Seek, you can change one number and try to get the result that you want. Well, in Solver, you can change multiple cells. So what I've done is I've made this yellow color, made it the inputs that we can change, and the objective, you can either minimize if it's a cost maybe, or maximize if it's some kind of profit, or you want a specific number, so you can have an objective. So we're gonna have an objective that's in this green highlight. And then we'll have some constraints. It cannot go above this number or below this number and so on. Now, Solver is included in Excel, but it is an add-in. And so it's not automatically showing on your menu system. So if you're on Windows, do File and then Options and then Excel add-ins, and then just make sure that Solver and Analysis Tool Pack are selected. Now, <clears throat> I'm using the Mac and I'm on Excel 365. So one way to do it is I can go to Tools and then Excel Add-ins, and then it has Analysis Tool Pack and Solver. Neither one of them are checked. I need to check those. But I'll show you the other way it works. If you're on Excel 365, go to the Data ribbon, and you'll see at the very right we have Analysis Tools, and it pulls up the same menu. So I'm going to select Analysis Tool Pack and Solver Add-in. I have to use this Solver Add-in. I have to select it before it is now on the Data ribbon. Under Analysis Tools, I have Solver. So here's Solver, and I already had worked a problem a little bit, but we'll clear all this out and, and see how it works. So first of all, we can set an objective, a minimum, maximum, or a value of by changing some sales subject to constraints. We have lots of things here. So I'm going to clear everything out. I'm going to reset it all, and then we're just going to build from scratch. We're going to look at this Let's say you're a student and you want a certain grade in class and you want a, a, a 90. So here's what we want. We want a 90 average and we have some homework in and some exam one, exam two, and here's the weight. Well, let's take the grade times the weight. So 89 times 15%, that is 13.35 for the total. And then we'll multiply all that out and copy that all the way down. So right now, we need a total. The total right now of that entire column is 57.35. Now, let's say we have two things still out. We need to work on a project. Let's say we can make a 90 on the project, and the final exam, we make an 88. Well, that's not gonna quite get a 90%. So we need to figure out if the project's worth 10%, and the final exam is worth 25%, how much do we need to make on these two to end up with 90%? Now you can adjust. You can say, well, this is 95 and this is 89. It's close, but Solver can calculate at least one answer. There's not one single answer here. So let's start at zero and zero. And if you use my same numbers, I think we'll get all the same answers. Now, we want a final average of 90%, so we want this total to be 90%, or 90 is the number, it's not a percent, 90. And the inputs for the project, we think we can score in between a 75 and a 100. And the final exam, we think the maximum we can score realistically is 96. Well, it's easy to say, hey, just make 100 in each one, don't worry about it. Well, that may be a challenge, so we think, hey, we think we can get a 96. You may not be able to get 100% on the final exam. So we're gonna use these as our constraints. So what's our objective? Our objectives, we want an average of 90. We want this number to be 90, it's 57 currently. We can change the two cells, the project and the final exam, and we have some constraints. The project cannot go below 75 or above 100, and the max, for the final exam is 96. So I'm going to use my solver. 
and I'm going to set my objective. I'm going to point to the this 57 number that we want that to be 90 after all this. We could maximize it. That's an easy function. Just you'd have to put 100 on the project and 100 on the final exam or 96 is the max and that would be the best we could do. But we want to try to solve for a value of 90. So we have a value of 90 and we can change the variable cells or the input cells and these two are the input cells. We're going to add constraints. We need to add several constraints here. First of all, we want the project, so that is C15, to be less than or equal to, and we can point to the 100. So we hit OK, and there's our first constraint. We can add another constraint. We want the project to be greater than or equal to the 75. So it has to be in between 75 and 100, and it could be e either of those two numbers. Now, we're trying to get a high score, so we know it's not going to be 75. Now, we need to do the final exam. So the final exam, we think the maximum realistically we can score is 96. So the final exam number is going to be less than or equal to the 96, and we'll hit OK. So what we have is we have the objective, which is the total average. We want it to be 90 by changing the cells, and I've put these at zero right now. We've got constraints where it has to be for the project between 75 and 100, and the final exam has to be less than 96. Now, we can solve several different ways. The default generally is this GRG nonlinear. We're going to use that. And we, we're going to make the unconstrained variables non-negative. This can't have a negative number for the project, a negative number for the final exam. So I think we're good here, and let's just solve. It'll take a few seconds, and it'll put those numbers in. It'll replace the zeros with some numbers. So we're going to keep the solver solution. So we hit OK. And so what we have is we need to make 100 on the project, and then the final exam, we would need to make a 90.6, so that means really like a 91. Now, we could adjust this a little bit. What if you made a 98 on the project, then you'd have to make a 92 maybe on the final exam. That's not the only solution, but that kind of gives us to say, well, what do we need to get? Well, if we got 100 on the project, we need a 90.6, or really a 91, looks like, on the final exam, and then we're guaranteed a, a 90. What if we only scored a 90? Well, we got 89.85, and you have to say, well, are they going to round that up to 90%? Is that an A? Now, also, let's look. The number is several decimals long for the 100. Um, it's just 100 even, but 90.6, and then uh, it continues for several decimals. So what Solver does is it changes these two numbers, the project and the final exam, to achieve a 90. All right, let's do a little more intricate problem. Maybe a problem you might do in uh, some kind of managerial accounting type of course. So here's our setup. We've got three products, Hotel, Indigo, and Juliet. We have sales price and variable cost per unit and contribution margin. So if we sell one, if we sell one Hotel uh, product, then that's $13. If we sell one Indigo product, that's $9. We sell one Juliet product, $5. Well, obviously, if we could sell one more, we would rather sell this one. We're making $13. But we have some constraints. We have some, uh, some labor hours and machine hours. It takes labor hours at half an hour, 0.3 of an hour, 0.2 of an hour. And then it takes machine hours, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.04. Now, we're limited by constraints. The monthly demand, we think, is for hotel only 11,000, for indigo it's 15,000, and for Juliet is 10,000. And we think the available monthly hours, the total that everyone, all our employees can work, is a total of 10,200. So you see it takes half an hour to make one hotel product. So we're limited, we can't just work unlimited hours. And then the available monthly machine hours is only 1,800. Each one takes a fraction of an hour. So let's 
calculate, let's build a table and we're going to change the production units and let it maximize monthly profit on these three. When you have two things, sometimes it's pretty easy to maybe guess, but three, it's really going to be helpful when Solver can do it for us. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make up, let's say we sell a thousand hotel products, a thousand indigo products, and a thousand Juliet products. Now I'm just typing those numbers in. Those numbers will be replaced by the Solver calculation. So what would our monthly profit be? Well, if we could sell a thousand, it's going to be a thousand times the thirteen dollars. That's going to be thirteen thousand dollars. And we're going to copy that across. It's going to be a thousand times the nine dollars, the thousand times the five dollars. Now we're going to add this up as a total. So that total, 13 plus 9 plus 5, is 27,000. We want to maximize that. We know we're going to probably produce more than 1,000 each. Our labor hours are going to be 1,000 units times the labor hours, 0.5. So it takes us 500 hours to, to build those 1,000 hotel products. We copied across, and then we also want to add that up. So we have labor hours we're using of 1,000. Now we have maximum labor hours of 10,200. So that would be a constraint that we have. And the machine hours, we need to multiply this out also. 1,000 units times the 0.05. That would be 50 machine hours. And then we copied across. So 1,000 machine hours times the 0.04 is 40 machine hours. And this totals 150 machine hours. We're limited to 1,800 machine hours. All right, we've got everything set up. So this is what we want to maximize. This is our objective. We want to maximize monthly total profit. By changing these three numbers, we can go as high as 11,000, 15,000, and 10,000 for the three products, but we cannot go above the labor hours. For example, let's say we go maximum of everything. Um, let's say 11,000, 15,000, and 10,000. Well, the problem is we're limited to 10,200 monthly labor hours, and we've gone over at 12,000. So we can't produce all that we can sell. Machine hours, 1,800. We got 1850, so we could almost do that, but we're really limited on our labor hours. So let's go back and put 1,000 in on each. Now everything is built on formulas. It must be built on formulas to, to, for solver to work. So we can change these numbers, and everything gets updated, and we have the maximized total profit, and we have constrained at 10,200 and 1,800, and we're constrained with monthly demand. They cannot go above 11,000, 15,000, and 10,000. All right, so let's go to Solver. And I have some things already, so I'm going to uh, delete this. I'm going to reset all of this. All right, so what is our objective? Our objective is we want the 27,000, the total monthly profit, and we want it to be max. We want it to um, be maximum, minimum, or a value of some, some number. We want it to be max by changing what cells. And I can highlight all three of these cells. These are the cells we can change, and we have constraints. The first constraint we have is the input cells have to be less than or equal to the constraint of 11,000, 15,000, and 10,000. Now you see I can put that entire range. The 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, the, the production units for Hotel, Indigo, and Juliet have to be less than or equal to the 11,000, the 15,000, and the 10,000. So we're going to hit OK. It brings us back to our solver window here. We also need to add, we need constraints for the monthly labor hour. So we're going to add where the cell reference, the total labor hours, has to be less than or equal to our 10,200. 
We're going to add the machine hours. The total machine hours has to be less than or equal to the 1,800. Okay, we solve for that. Now, we want the unconstrained variables non-negative. It already comes essentially checked here. Um, we don't want to say, well, we're going to do negative Juliet numbers, and that would uh, solve our problem here. We don't want to do that, and we can't run negative labor hours or whatever. So we want this to be non-negative. And I think this is all we need to do, so let's do solve. It's going to change these numbers right here, the 1,000. And do you see what happens? It actually ran through and did a lot of iterations. We didn't see that. It solved this, and it says, look, we want it to maximize Indigo. We want to maximize Hotel, and then the remainder is Juliet. Now, why? We're, it looks like we're limited to 10,200. We're limited on uh, monthly labor hours. So the way we think about this, if our constraint really is labor hours, let's take 13 as our contribution margin per unit divided by your labor hours. What is the most profitable per labor hour? So let's go across and we copy it. What we'll see is 9 divided by 0.3 is, this is contribution margin per labor hour. So if we figure this out ahead of time, we would certainly do Indigo first, and then Hotel, and then Juliet. And that's what happened. If we're limited, then this is our priority. Indigo would be number one, and then Hotel, and then Juliet, because we're limited on the labor hours. All right, so that's how you do Solver. We have several different things you can do. You can change several different input cells. You can... Uh, reach an objective. The objective is 283,000. No other combination of Hotel, Indigo, and Juliet would have a higher profit. And we are subject to constraints. Here we hit the constraint 10,200. We did not hit the constraint for machine hours, but we did not go above 11,000, 15,000, and 10,000 for our monthly demand. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.